Future Proof is sponsored by Equipping Young Adults for Life, Inspiring Student Resilience, Championing Hope. Hello and welcome to Future Proof. Thank you so much for joining me, Sarah Hopwood, as I continue these programmes predominantly for education, young adults, uh, either students still in education or indeed younger adults who are looking to get their foot on the um, employment ladder or indeed start their own business. Uh, but like all these things, uh, some of the content could re resonate with you wherever you are on your journey. And that is, in fact, the whole purpose of these programmes just to try and share um, some nuggets, if you like, of um, things that I've learned along the way or uh, wisdoms that have been shared with me. And if you've been watching any of the earlier programmes, then you'll know that I've been working down a list of negative mindsets. And uh, these are mindsets that don't serve us anymore. And always remember that a limiting belief is maybe a belief that used to serve you, but it doesn't serve you now. So it doesn't mean to say what you believed before was always wrong and rubbish. What we're looking for, though, is a belief system or um, tools that can really help you move forward rather than hinder you and stop you from moving forward. So the first one I looked at was everyone else is better than me. Uh, please, now, if you Google um, on YouTube Future Proof TV, then you can subscribe to the channel there and you can see all of these programs as I've uploaded them all onto YouTube as well. Uh, then we've had uh, my future is determined by my past which of course is a lie and we have to be so so careful of these lies and if you spell out the word believe b-e-l-i-e-f or v-e then uh, you'll see actually the word l-i-e in that spelling and we have to be so careful of lies that we believe about ourselves or indeed um, believe about other people because whatever you believe is true true and sometimes that is so so wrong we've got it fundamentally wrong and then we go on and share our belief systems about somebody so we actually sort of spread the contamination if you like around to groups of people as well so always remember that you see things as you are you don't see things as they are so if you don't like what you see first first port of call place to go is to double check what we are believing about what we're hearing or about what we're seeing and obviously to watch out for something called unconscious bias as well and uh, I, I've said I've talked about this in previous programs and I'm sure unconscious bias will come up again but that's not for today so just hold that thought so today this is a very sensitive one um, a negative mindset that doesn't serve us and the mindset is it is not my fault and um, the reason why it's so sensitive is because I know there are people watching who have been subjected to things, people have spoken over them or indeed um, uh, enforced their authority, if that's the right word, and influence over them in a wrong way. And um, in those circumstances, it is definitely not your fault. So please don't think that I am um, saying that the mindset it is not my fault is um, completely wrong. Um, for many of you, it is a true statement, particularly of the past. But, and this is very, very close to home, we all have family and loved ones and indeed friends that we love very, very dearly. And it's not that long ago that I really had to push back on somebody that I love because I would not allow them to say it is not my fault. And there's a reason why, and I will go through that. Um, I want to start off by saying, by addressing these negative mindsets that don't serve us, um, it enables us to be more response-able. In other words, it makes us more able to respond. And um, if you have listened to any of the earlier programs, then you'll know that the heart of emotionally intelligent thinking empowers you to respond rather than react. And so if we are able to get rid of these negative mindsets that make us more able 
to respond, making us responsible, then it means that we can um, take greater control over our lives and we can indeed have a happier life. So what did I say to um, this person that I love so dearly? The first thing was I just said, I refuse to let you give up. And this person was saying, I have tried everything. I have, uh, and I understand everything. You know, it's not just trying, but very often we spend time thinking and going through things. You might even read up and study on content. So the person was coming back and saying, I know, I know this stuff, I know what's going on. I can't do any more and I can't change it. And I was absolutely adamant that um, uh, I would not give them permission to hold on to that belief system. And the main reason why, and I actually said it as well, is if I endorse what you have said, that you can't do anything about this, then I am leave, I'm joining you in leaving you nowhere to go. And that is wholly, wholly destructive because the core thing we all need as human beings is a sense of hope, a sense of a light at the end of the tunnel. And so if I endorse the belief system that everything had been tried, there was no way of changing it, then I was um, locking down um, any sense of hope and I was leaving them in a state of despair. And so that kind of victim mentality, which is what often people call it, is totally and wholly unacceptable. So before I go on, I just want to say again, there are people you have had things said or done to you or not said and done to you that have been out of your control and they are not your fault. I understand that, but to hold on to a negative mentality of saying, it is not my fault, I've tried everything, then it leaves you nowhere to go, which then suffocates your sense of hope. And what I want to do is push back as I did with the person that I love dearly, and I said, I will not allow you to have that belief system, so let's look at what you can change. What you can't change, all you can do is change how you think about what is going on. And, you know, I've, I've heard people who've been kept in captivity talk about how they, the only thing they could control that couldn't be taken away from them was the way that they thought. And the way that they thought empowered them to cope with what was happening. So I want to move forward now and say, how do we get rid of the victim? Or how do we certainly try and take control of the victim mentality? So that by controlling it, we can actually bring it back down the spectrum to a healthier level of thinking. And I want to, and I have talked about it a long time ago, I think, on a very early program, something called Locus of Control. Now, this is a paper that was written by a gentleman called Julian Rotter, an American psychologist. And I'm going to set it up now, and then I'm going to finish talking about it in the second half. So he talked about two uh, dominant ways of thinking and the paper was written in 1954 and at the time um, his critics said it was too extreme and when we talk about it I think you might agree yes it is too extreme but when I understood this, it really, really helped me change my thinking and to move away from victim control, if you like, victim victimization, if that's the right word, which um, can sometimes take over your thinking. And it gave me hope of being able to control um, what I could influence and therefore bring about the changes that I could within the parameters of what I was dealing with. So he talks about two um, ways of thinking. One is external locus of control or external thinking, and the other one is internal. And I'm gonna run you through the external, and then I'm gonna pick up on the internal after the break. So, the external um, stimulus, in other words, something that happens, so it could be the weather, it could be COVID-19, something happens that is completely out of your control. You can then move across and you can then respond in many different ways. I've seen that, we've all seen that, of different people responding in different ways. And then we have the outcomes. And those who responded in a more positive way, rather than their head down saying, this is terrible, my, you know, what am I going to do? There's nothing I can do. This belief system, I've tried everything, there's nothing I can do. 
their outcomes will not be as good as somebody who thinks in a different way. And this is what Julian Rotter was talking about. So and the same situation can happen. So bad weather on plans or indeed COVID arrives, which influences your decision making and what you're able to do. You have the response box and the outcome box as the external thinker has. But the difference is, and this is what we're going to talk about after the break, is the internal thinker believes that they can be in control of things they can influence. So rather than knee jerk into a response, they dive down into what is called the choice box. And it is in this choice box that you and I can both go. It's not exclusive. Anybody can go into that box. You make some choices around the situation that you can't influence that has happened to you. And those choices will very, very much determine the outcomes that you get. So I hope that you'll stay with me as I pick up this um, tool and uh, we'll just see you in a moment. <laughs> 